everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk. My name is John, and today here on the channel, we're going to be talking about the 1993 Best Picture winner, Schindler's List, and its 4K Blu-ray from Universal. So Schindler's List was originally released back in 1993, the same year that Jurassic Park came out. That's because this movie was directed by Steven Spielberg, and Steven Spielberg loves to put out two movies in a year. He did this again in 1997 with Amistad and Jurassic Park, The Lost World, 2002 with Catch Me If You Can and Minority Port, and more recently in 2018 with The Post and Ready Player One. So he loves to just be working on multiple projects at the same time when he was making this movie. He was directing Schindler's List in the day while editing Jurassic Park at night, just setting over his notes back to the United States. John Williams had to do the same thing. He was doing the score for Jurassic Park and then he would have to finish that up, come over to Schindler's List and do the score for this. And he ends up actually winning best score for Schindler's List. Now, personally, I would give it to Jurassic Park, but I understand why it went to Schindler's List. <laughs> It's, it's a dinosaur. And Schindler's List is one of the most important films ever released. It really is just a masterpiece. Now, I watched my favorite Steven Spielberg movie, E.T., the night before, and then I watched Schindler's List the next night. And yeah, I have to say it, Schindler's List is Steven Spielberg's best film. It's his best made film. It's not my favorite Steven Spielberg film, mainly because of the subject matter, which is very tough to watch. But it is very important that you see this film. It's still very important 30 years later, especially in the world where we're becoming more and more desensitized. And that's exactly why Steven Spielberg wanted to make this movie. He originally got the offer because he read a review of the book Schindler's Ark back in 1982. Universal actually bought the rights to the book in 1983. He said, I'll make this film in 10 years. And even then, he still didn't know if he wanted to do it. He tried to pass the project along that directors like Roman Polanski, who outright refused. He ended up making his own holocaust movie in 2002 but he actually was there in the holocaust and i believe his mother was even killed in the holocaust so i can understand why roman polanski refused and then martin scorsese was attached in 1988 and actually was going to direct but steven spielberg is a friend and he's like you know what maybe i should direct it and finally steven spielberg agreed to direct it and martin scorsese instead got the offer to do the remake of cape fear 1991 so i think it all worked out even martin scorsese has said as good of a job as he think he would have done he would not have done as good a job as steven spielberg Steven Spielberg is a Jewish man, and I do believe that this movie should be directed by a Jewish person and be the one to tell this story, a very important story. The story of Oscar Schindler in this movie played by Liam Neeson, but the real person, Oscar Schindler, was an industrialist who was just really trying to capitalize and just get rich. That's all he was originally intending to do, Oscar Schindler. But when he started seeing what was going on, yes, he was taking Jewish people into his factory to build these pots and pans and everything for the war, really capitalizing on what's going on. But Oscar Schindler just could not take what he was seeing going on in the world, especially over there with the Holocaust and all the Nazis. He's really using that to manipulate all of the Nazis to, you know, give as many Jewish people as they possibly can to him in his factory where he'll take care of them. By the very end of it, he wasn't even making money. He was just there to protect as many Jewish people as he possibly could and that's what this film is all about we're exploring that arc of oscar schindler while also showing you the horrendous acts that were happening during the holocaust during world war ii and it is just absolutely brutal and that's what steven spielberg was trying to show you when you read a list of the holocaust you see 1.1 million people died in auschwitz you don't put a face to it now in this movie what steven spielberg is trying to do is he's taking sequences building characters up like the one armed person who works in the factory under liam neeson you know he's thanking liam neeson for the job he's like you, sir. All right. You are a good man. I really appreciate it. You saved my life. Then the next day, they're out there shoveling snow. They see a one-armed guy, the Nazis, and they just take him and just shoot him in the face. And it's just absolutely brutal. They do that numerous times in this movie with the engineer who's so smart. Smart Jewish woman, but when it's Ray Fine sees her, she tells him, we got to repour the foundation. It's really bad. It's not going to work. He has someone shoot her in the face, and then he tells everybody, do exactly what she said. Just because she's Jewish doesn't mean she's as much of a human as everybody else. And that's exactly what these Nazis believed. And Ray Fiennes is the worst of them. And in this movie, he portrays this character just so brutal that he's playing. I mean, it is just abusive and disgusting. And yet, you know, Steven Spielberg tries to humanize him a little bit. The first time we see him, he's got a cold. He's always wiping his nose. Steven Spielberg actually did something similar in Bridge of Spies with Tom Hanks, who has a cold throughout the entire film. But in this movie, you know, we're trying to humanize him and be like, hey, you know what? These Nazis, just because you label them as Nazis, they were human beings as well and they committed these absolutely horrible acts and I mean Ray Fiennes is just killing people the scene where he's just taking his 
sniper rifle while every all the Jewish people are just walking around down there and he's just firing them off and just killing people one by one and then he just puts a sniper rifle down goes back in the bedroom like nothing ever even happened like that's just absolutely fucking disgusting and they show that throughout this entire movie how the deaths are just so matter of the fact you just pull somebody off the line and just shoot them in the face in front of their whole family and just be like hey don't you get out of the line too because I'll shoot you in the face and they had no problem just killing human being after human being like it is just disgusting to watch this and that's why this movie is just so hard to rewatch I've actually rewatched this movie about four or five times it's really just because of the appreciation of the filmmaking Steven Spielberg is one of the best to ever do it and the cinematography in this movie done by Janetz Kaminsky is just absolutely amazing he did win the best cinematography that year and it's well deserved I mean it's just some of the best black and white cinematography I've ever seen not to mention you know we start in color we end in color then obviously the girl with the red jacket that's another symbolic moment in this movie and that's really what breaks Liam Neeson is he notices that one girl just like us you know again humanizing these people he sees the one girl in the red jacket and then later in the film when he sees her in a pile of bodies you know that just breaks him down that's him putting a face to these people you know at the very beginning he didn't really care Ben Kingsley does an amazing job in this movie as well as you'd expect from Ben Kingsley he's one of the most underrated yes he is an Academy Award winning actor but he's still very underappreciated for his work Ray Fiennes again like I said his performance in this movie is probably the best performance in this movie but you don't want to say like a person playing a Nazi is doing the best job but Ray Fiennes is another person who's never won an Academy Award and he's just been so consistent he's so charming when he pops up in the James Bond movies the Harry Potter movies you're like man this guy is such a great actor how has he not been awarded for his work and in this movie he probably gave his best performance but he is playing a Nazi and a brutal one at that I can understand why the Academy probably didn't want to award it to him and I think this is the same year that Tommy Lee Jones won for The Fugitive and I love Sam Gerard he's one of my favorite characters in film ever that'd be a lesson to you boys and girls don't ever argue with the big dog big dog is always right so I understand but still Ray Fiennes just gives a performance of a lifetime in this movie and the movie in general is just a masterpiece I cannot sell short this movie was in, put into the National Library of Congress in 2004 only 11 years after it's released you don't really see that too much usually movies take a lot longer to become culturally significant but this movie was a 10 out of 10 film the second it came out it's just hard to rewatch but I really do think that this is a movie if you haven't seen it you have to see it at least once in your lifetime just for the cinematography and score but the message and the themes of this movie and just seeing what human beings can just do to other human beings we cannot forget about things like this we cannot forget that these things happened that's another reason Steven Spielberg wanted to make this movie is he felt like people were becoming more desensitized and after the fall of the Berlin Wall and were becoming more Holocaust deniers like it didn't even happen you hear that happening now again like people denying that the Holocaust even happened so Steven Spielberg felt compelled to make this movie and I really feel like if you guys haven't seen Steven Spielberg Schindler's List you owe it to yourself is it the most enjoyable movie no but that's the point you're not supposed to enjoy this movie you're supposed to appreciate the filmmaking while also getting an understanding of what other human beings had to go through back in the late 1930s and the early 1940s and just how these people have were forced to live their lives and what they had to go through it is a brutal horrible story but it's one that you have to see to just gain an appreciation for what people had to go through that's why steven spielberg chose to shoot this like a documentary style didn't even use storyboards and it was really really hard for him to do this movie actually robin williams would call him up just to cheer him up because he would break down crying every day because of what he's seeing you know it was really an emotional moment for him and i absolutely love this movie i highly recommend you guys check this one out even if you don't want to check it out on this universal 4k blu-ray that we're going to talk about right now but before we do that, if you are a fan of 4K Blu-ray reviews, movie reviews, lists, podcasts, and shorts, we try and do them all here on the channel. Nothing helps the channel out more than by hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button. And if you want to do it, we have channel memberships, so check that out as well. <laughs> Well, I have the 2018 Universal 4K Blu-ray that came out for Schindler's List to celebrate its 25th anniversary. And this is actually getting a re-release right now, this very week, on 4K Blu-ray yet again. And you're going to get it in an exclusive Best Buy Steelbook, or you can get it with a brand new slipcover, different from the one that I have right here. But it is the exact same scan. There are no differences. It's a three-disc set, just like this one. So if you were expecting this to be something completely brand new, that is not true. Actually, you could probably get this right now for a little bit cheaper. Last I checked... 
it was $18.99, whereas if you buy that exclusive steelbook or the new version with the new slipcover, it is the exact same thing, but they're going to be charging a little bit more because it's new artwork. Don't you guys worry about it if you are planning to pick that up. I actually checked this out again last night, and this was the first time I actually watched it on an OLED TV. The last time I watched this movie, I watched it on a Sony 950H LED TV. Going to OLED, it's just night and day in comparison because, my God, this is probably the best-looking black-and-white film I've ever seen. I thought the best black-and-white 4K that I had ever seen was The Night of the Hunter that was put out by Keenan Lorber this very year, but I hadn't seen Schindler's List on 4K since I picked this up back in 2018, so it's been five years. Like I said, very hard to revisit, and when I watched it for the first time in Dolby Vision, it just blew me away. First of all, you get Dolby Vision, HDR10, and you also get a nice Dolby Atmos track, a really good Dolby Atmos track as well. I mean, yes, it's not the most reference quality Dolby Atmos track, mainly because this movie isn't an action-heavy movie. Yeah, there's scenes of it, but the times when you hear the Dolby Atmos track most is like in that one scene in the ghetto, one of the most brutal scenes in the film, and they're just tearing apart the apartments, and you see it all getting thrown out in the middle of the ghetto, and you can just hear all those clothes and belongings just in the back of your ears just because the rear speakers are doing such a good job during that scene when they're playing the piano while the other Nazis are going room to room room and just killing person after person. <laughs> That's when you really hear the Atmos score pumping, and it really just does a great job. It is a beautiful Dolby Atmos track. And when you talk about older 4K Blu-rays, this is a five-year-old 4K Blu-ray at this point. Usually, they're not as good when you compare them to a 2023 Blu-ray, but I just cannot imagine this Dolby Atmos track being any better. And let's just go to the packaging before we talk a little bit about the visuals. So like I said, I have this 2018 4K Blu-ray with this slipcover on it, and I think this slipcover is a little bit nicer than the one that just got released. But I think that the Steelbook version is really nice. And if I could and I could afford it, I would probably grab that. So if you have that 4K in the Steelbook version coming, I think you're a very lucky person. And in comparison with the two slip covers, they're both good. But like I said, I kind of prefer this one with the girl in the red coat on it. It's probably a little bit more iconic, but I can appreciate it if you like that other slip cover. So when you slide this off, come underneath, same artwork. This did come with a digital code at the time. Like I said, a three disc set. So you get your 4K Blu-ray, you get your Blu-ray, which is not the same scan, I'm pretty sure. I think this is just a previously released Blu-ray based on the menu system that's in there. They're very different. And then the third disc is just a bonus disc. I always appreciate extras and you get plenty of them on here. A great 25 year look back on the film that one is just so well edited and just listening to steven spielberg's talk about how he got into the movie and how he was about to make the movie like they should have interviews from the tribeca film festival back in 2018 and steven spielberg is just a great storyteller in general whether it be on film or just him just telling stories just seems like one of the world's nicest guys just love listening to him that is a great documentary on there but you also get plenty of other extras as well so it's awesome that we got a third bonus disc what i always complain about here on the channel now is we don't get enough extras but they weren't doing that back in 2018 look they gave us a four a downgraded Blu-ray, and they also gave us a bonus disc. That is really awesome. That's really catering to the consumer, the collector, and again, this is one of the most important films. You want as much stuff on it as you possibly can, and I really appreciate them doing that. But what about that 4K? Like I said, it's got Dolby Vision and HDR10, and it is definitely the best looking black and white 4K I have ever seen. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that it was a choice to film this in black and white in 1993, because there are sequences with color, like the opening and the ending of this film, and also seeing the girl in the red coat and, you know, Jenny Kaminsky is one of the greatest cinematographers out there. So, of course, it's so well shot. The source material is great. So, of course, it's going to look just absolutely gorgeous. There's just some beautiful shots in this movie that, again, you could take a screenshot of, put it as your wallpaper, put it on a photo on your wall, and it'll just look absolutely gorgeous. And the HDR and the Dolby Vision are doing such good work in this movie. You know, Steven Spielberg and the cinematographer took a lot of inspiration from German Expressionism, and you can absolutely see that here on the screen. Again, comparing it to Night of the Hunter, which also took a lot of inspiration from German Expressionism. You know, you get those deep blacks, and that's where 4K really just enhances that. I mean, the blacks are deep, but then when you get to 4K in comparison to the Blu-ray, you know, it just gets brighter. So, like, the whites and grays become more brighter, but you don't have that faded gray look in the background. The way they lit these scenes, it's just incredible. It's really hard to describe the beauty of this film, but again, it's just so hard to rewatch because of the subject matter that even though this film is probably one of the best shot films ever, it probably doesn't get the credit now in 2023 that it did back in 1993, just because not enough people are going back to revisit this film. Again, I can highly recommend you do because it is just a gorgeous, well-made film, and this 4K Blu-ray, for a 2018 4K Blu-ray, it really is impressive. Usually when I go back and look at older 4K Blu-rays, I could see room for improvement. That is not the case with this 4K Blu-ray at all. It is still perfect, so if you haven't grabbed this yet, and you're going to be picking up that brand new steelbook or that brand new slipcover, and it has this 4K version in there, it is still an absolute 
10 out of 10, perfect 4K Blu-ray. I highly recommend you pick it up. And like I said, you could probably grab the version that I have right now for a little bit cheaper at about $18.99. That might drop a little bit in price, but more than likely, once they run out of the stock with this slipcover version, you probably won't be able to get it. So you might want to grab that right now or just grab one of those new versions because, again, this is a film that I feel like you have to see. And it's one you should have in your collection, in your Steven Spielberg collection, because it is his best made film. It's just not his most entertaining film. And that's there for a reason. But certain films are not there to entertain you they're just culturally important and this is one of the most important films ever made i highly recommend it but anyway guys thank you so much for joining me here on another episode of let's talk and if you enjoyed this episode don't forget to hit that like button hit that subscribe button and we also have channel membership guys and i want to thank my two producers right now here on the channel and jason martin and Frank Rodriguez, you guys can join the producers tier, which is about six ninety nine, or you can also enjoy, or you can join our friends of the channel tier, which is two ninety nine, or the directors tier, which is the big boy tier, that's about twenty four ninety nine. Check out what all of those come with down in the description below. No pressure, guys. You don't have to join that. All you got to do is really just hit that like and subscribe button, then get out in those streets and tell your friends about us, and we will be seeing you around. <laughs>